If you've been in the Husband Hotel or Hell of a Boss community for a while, you've most likely come across one of Vivzy Pop's many dramas. Some of these range from things that happened 10 years ago to more recent allegations. It's basically a ritual at this point that any time something new about either show is announced, someone on Twitter will make a Twitter thread listing off everything bad Vivzy Pop has done. It's starting to get annoying, especially since most of these criticisms have either been debunked years ago or don't have any weight in the first place. In this video, I'm going to go through every Vivzy Pop drama one by one so we can finally put them to rest. I'll start with the oldest dramas first and then we'll work our way back to the most recent. The first accusation I want to discuss is the accusation that Vivzy supports the B word. This is in reference to an older artwork in which he drew a character from her Zephobia webcomic series named Addison naked in a bath of snakes. The character is canonically 18, however the wiki used to say they were 17. As for the actual image, it's definitely suggestive. There's no explicit body parts shown, but it's definitely NSFW. There's another two images, but they're both super low res and cropped, so it's a little hard to see what's happening, but they're basically the same. Just more suggestive art featuring the the snakes. As for this one, I can understand why some people are angry about it. The art is quite tame compared to stuff nowadays, but you could definitely put forward the argument that it's a bit weird. This art was made in 2012, when Vivzy was 19. This is related to the next point, but Vivzy came out a couple years ago with an apology. In her apology, she said, I guess I now have to add that any cringy art I drew is from 2012 when I was 19. It was legal then, it's legal now. It was also tagged as being an inside joke, even back then. Do I think it's strange? Yeah. It's cringy, and I don't like it any more than you guys do. I was a dumb kid, figuring myself out, but I've never drawn explicit NSFW or broken the law then or now. Fucking stop, please. I agree with what Vivian said. Yes, the art is pretty cringy, but this is 2012 Vivzy Pop. Vivzy in 2022 is a completely different person than she was 10 years prior. Vivzy didn't continue to make art like this, and has never drawn an NSFW piece before. As far as I'm concerned, there's no issue here, and we should move on. Up next, we have the argument that Vivzy is a p-word. This argument, like the previous one, is brought up regularly, even to this day. One example of a thread on this talks about two characters, one being Gustav, and the other is Addison from the previous point. Both the characters are canonically adults, with one being 18 and the other being 19. So obviously this situation isn't illegal. The second situation is about two other characters being Mirage and Kestrel. The drama around this is due to an image where Mirage sees Kestrel and her mouth is watering. She calls Kestrel a cutie, and the description of the image says, this is where you run Cass. Realized I never visualized Cass and Mirage interacting, and Mirage would definitely love Kestrel in her sick pedo way XD. While it's true that Kestrel is a minor and Mirage is an adult, they're not a couple. It's nowhere in their bio, and in fact, Mirage is actually the villain of Zephobia, so of course she would be a horrible person. There's no sexual imagery, and Mirage is obviously portrayed as a bad person. It's pretty mind-boggling for people to call Viv a p-word when it took a three-minute Google search to find out that it's untrue. We can safely debunk this rumor. Before moving on, I'd like to read out an apology Viv made on her Tumblr in 2018. She made an edit to it in 2019 and added a bit more onto it as well. I'm only going to say this once. For the millionth time, I'm seeing certain things regarding me popping up. First on Twitter, and now it's found its way back into my tags here. And to be honest, every time it ticks me off more and more, so I feel like tackling it one more time before letting it die and not saying anything about it. The only reason I feel like saying anything is because I honestly feel hurt every time I see accusations of things I morally and wholeheartedly detest. I want to start off by saying, people enjoy finding reasons to dislike creators they want to dislike. I am definitely one of those artists. Most reasons people find to excuse their gut feelings about me and cling on to reasons to label me as an awful person usually pertain to blatantly false rumors or twisted facts from years ago or mistakes I made years ago that they just refuse to accept I've grown from. One involves lies about how I stole a character from an ex-abusive friend. No, I did not. That person was abusive and after we fell out he tried to post a false contract proving I had to credit them and everything I used the design I legally obtained. I posted the final contract proving this years back. I have since retired the character design and created something original from the concept I originated. It's done, it was years ago. It was personal artist drama that got dragged into the public by a bitter, abusive person. I regret many things about how I behaved back then, but that situation was forced on me, and seeing it brought up to this day when it happened so many years ago is honestly upsetting at times. That person was incredibly destructive in my life. We've gone separate ways. I don't wish them any harm, 
Spot. I don't want any connection with him anymore. Second is the weird rumors that I sued Disney over Zootopia. Do I even need to dignify this one? No. I never did this. Why on earth would I ever do that? I was emotional over the title. I have since posted nothing but support and love for the movie. I've also explained in detail in past years why I was emotional about the movie. Never that I had bitterness for or felt any legal right to the concept. Third is the one that's most enraging to see, that I am transphobic and racist because two years ago I drew quick doodle fan art for a few controversial YouTubers, one of which made a tasteless joke on their Twitter. Two years ago I was in the worst place in my entire life. It was a very intense political time for our country as well and I was finding comfort in hearing perspectives from all sides because I wanted to really see all sides to create my own opinions. I don't believe in living in a bubble and I feel to make a stronger argument for your own opinions, you must attempt to understand the opposing side so you can properly try to combat it. And I also admire the fact that two women were owning their own beliefs and speaking their mind, even if I disagreed at the time. That was just very admirable to me as a woman. I had only ever seen certain bits of content for them and I thought they were pretty, so I doodled them. I say this not to excuse the fact that I did the fan art, but just to give some context as why I felt compelled to at the time. Also, this is just based on my own recollection because honestly, two years ago, I feel I was an entirely different person and I can barely even recall it. This is just my guess based on how I remember feeling. I have done nothing but recover from my trauma past since moving out here to LA. I've been slowly rebuilding my mental health and I feel like I'm finding myself again. I've been maturing and I've been finally overcoming the pain of my past and the abuse I've endured to create a real project with incredible people and true friends. Back then I didn't follow either of them on Twitter so I don't see the insensitive jokes they made. I didn't condone them at the time and I do not now. I wasn't always the best at my words back then and I'm not always the best at being blindsided with accusations, especially that year. I was in a bad place and I was very emotionally lost and angry. I was dealing with a borderline lawsuit against the company that stole thousands from me. I'm still too scared to talk about this situation, maybe someday I will, as well as dealing with intense personal loss regarding relationships. I'm a human being, I can make mistakes, and I made a lot of them in the past. I own that 100%. I can totally understand if I left a sour taste in some people's mouths. We are all human, and if you don't know me personally and only see the dumb stuff I do online, I can't control how I come off to people. I don't watch or support these YouTubers nowadays, because I do not like the opinions or behaviour and rhetoric they were catering towards. I do not currently support that at all. It's just frustrating to be labelled as a bad person by people who don't know me. Don't you dare accuse me of things and actions that were not mine. Don't you dare accuse me of being things I am not. I have nothing but love, respect, and support for the trans community. A good number of the has-been team are trans. The idea that I'd ever invalidate them as people is abhorrent to me. I am the daughter of a Salvadoran immigrant and damn proud of it. Most of my personal heroes are people of colour. I find things like BF in this day and age awful and I don't condone it even for edgy jokes. That's not something I personally find funny. I don't believe comedy is something that should ever be censored but that doesn't mean I think every dumb edgy joke is funny. I don't. You can hate me if you want. You can think that I'm not the glowing perfect creator everyone seems to expect people to be nowadays. I have made plenty of mistakes. I can be sarcastic, I can be kind of bitchy on bad days on social media. Sometimes I make dumb jokes or mistakes online. Sometimes I have dumb opinions on things. Everyone does. But don't drag up shit from two years ago like it's relevant now. Things I didn't do. I'm not responsible for edgy jokes made by others. I thank everyone for the support of my project, Husband Hotel. It's more than just me, it's a team of insanely talented people from varying walks of life. I hate that nowadays people feel this need to find everything wrong with a show's team or its creator. Like everyone can be responsible for each other at all times. I hate this guilt by association. Or that you can know people as people and not always see eye to eye on everything. I'm someone who just wants to have people in my life who are real and I know care about me. I want to help change hearts and minds with the stories I tell and I want to give voices and jobs to people who might not get focused on usually, who are talented and deserve way more opportunity. I want to use my position on this show to bring fresh perspectives and voices to the industry. LGBT voices, people of colour voices, women's voices. I'm not a perfect person, I could never be, but I'm doing my best. I change every day every year I get older I get wiser if you don't like me or my show that's totally fine but stop trying to get others to feel the way you do and if you're someone who can turn on an artist without looking into the facts checking dates or using your own mind and I don't know what to say to you. I just implore everyone to think for themselves. Don't just let someone dictate how you should feel. I'm sorry for posting about something kind of serious. I just take this kind of thing seriously. I want the past to be the past because my past is the thing that I'm trying desperately to escape. 
It is full of abuse, darkness, deteriorating mental health, and embarrassing mistakes that haunt me. I used art to cope with my own budding sexuality and doodled weird things when I was much younger. Who can say they didn't do that? Haha. <laughs> I've grown so much since being an artist whose life revolved around the internet and people's opinions on it. I want to look towards the future and it gets hard when people keep clawing me back into the past. Like every mistake will just never go away. People want me to grow but refuse to accept that I've been growing and changing and to those people I just say it's okay to not like me just cause power to you. I also want to genuinely thank everyone for enjoying Has Been, and if you run into posts regarding my past and been upset by it, I sincerely apologize. The most heartbreaking thing for me is the thought that I'm an awful person who doesn't think certain people are valid, has upset anyone who is enjoying the project I'm making. I just want to assure everyone who is upset that no, I don't think you or anyone else is invalid, or that you don't deserve support. Thank you for enjoying my project. It has become so much bigger than me. It has become something special for so many people on the team, and they deserve the love and support support you give. Love you all. Edit. Don't hate on people who just didn't know about the situation and posted concern. While I don't appreciate being labelled a bad person, I know some of these people are young and impressionable and have let harsher people turn their heads and dictate their opinion. Don't harass anyone over this or on my behalf. You can inform them, but don't give anyone a hard time for being upset or concerned due to people misleading them. Edit. Edit. If I do still see people state that I support blackface, ew. Like it's fact, they're getting an instant block because fuck no. 2019 edit. So this bullshit is blowing up again and people seem incapable of taking the 5 seconds to find this post. So here it is again and this is the last fucking time. I guess I now have to add that any cringy art I drew is from 2012 when I was 19. It was legal then, it's legal now. It was also tagged as being an inside joke even back then. Do I think it's strange? Yeah, it's cringy and I don't like it any more than you guys do. I was a dumb kid, figuring myself out, but I've never drawn explicit NSFW or broken the law then or now. Fucking stop, please. I despise that people care more about a fictional character than an actual human being. If you're someone who feels that it's okay to accuse someone of being the worst thing a human being can be without checking dates or acknowledging in context, or ignoring that there are only a couple, small selection of examples over the course of, what, 12 years I've been online, you are earning a block from me, because I value myself more than to allow people who entertain that bullshit near me in this life. Thanks. Also, to cover all bases, animation, homage, and memes exist. If you guys think I stole things when they were either homage, which is done by every animator under the sun, how many people do the Akira bike slide frame by frame or recreate scenes from movies or animes and cartoons intentionally to make a nod to something that inspired them? Or it was practice for fun as a meme, like how many people have recreated the caramel dancing for fun? Get the fuck over yourselves with this traced animation bullshit. Grow up. If you think I steal animation because of the handful of shots within my multitude of work that are either a meme practice or homage, you will never understand animation with that attitude. If you've noticed that I've gotten progressively madder about this situation, it's because now I'm being accused of being the worst thing a human can be over weird but legal art I did as a teen, and animation tactics that every professional and show is guilty of and is in no way a bad thing. Anyone who thinks these things hold any credible concern, you've earned my disdain. Okay, did that cover it all? Good, good. I thought it would be important to include that apology because not many people are aware of its existence. Vivian acknowledged some of the mistakes she made in the past and she vowed to learn from them. Some of the things she mentioned will be relevant later, so I just wanted to provide a bit of context. This one has to do with some old art Vivzy made where she paid homage to various memes and pieces of media. First is a gif she made with a character from her Zephobia comic where she does the same dance from the song Me Me Me. Apparently in the original post she cited Me 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 and credited it correctly. This was so long ago that I was unable to find the original post however. Regardless, cancelling someone for making a reference to a popular meme is beyond stupid. By this logic we should cancel everyone who did the sad cat dance meme. The second example is her paying homage to some old animated movies in her September SVA thesis film. The last two are one where JJ does a similar movement to a character from another film. This is just more referencing. Lastly, we see some line work where an animal does a similar walk as a character from another old animated movie. So after looking through all the examples, this is a pretty scuffed criticism. None of the examples are tracing and they're all just references to pieces of media. The only criticism you can level towards Vivzi is that she didn't credit the original pieces in the Die Young music video, the Timber film and the other piece. Vivzi also mentioned this argument in her 2018 apology. Again, I agree with what Vivzi had said. It's illogical to hold her accountable for paying homage to something or making memes about it when literally everyone does it.
So this one is about the fact that Vivzy apparently romanticizes eating disorders. Before I continue, I want to bring up the fact that the account that posted this thread made their first post on August 7th, 2020, which was coincidentally the same date that Hasbun Hotel was picked up by A24. It basically reiterates what I said earlier, where anytime news happens regarding either Hasbun, Halliver, or Vivzy, these bad faith threads and accounts spawn out of thin air to spread misinformation. So back to the thread. This criticism is that the first drawing was made when Kesha entered rehab. Shortly after, Vivzy went back to drawing Kesha extremely skinny. This criticism makes no sense at all. In the DeviantArt post, we see Vivzy say, Kesha is beautiful and perfect. I hope she makes a full recovery in rehab. Her weight is sexy as hell. She's a warrior and I love her. The next image is a cropped, low quality image of Kesha that Vivzy drew. It's impossible to tell what's going on because it's cropped and maybe the perspective made the person think this, but she looks completely fine. The original image comes from a 2015 speed draw of Kesha, but the video is unfortunately private. In 2016, Vizzy did another speed draw of Kesha, and the description reads, I actually met Kesha recently, and I gave her this print in a frame. So again, this criticism holds no weight at all either. The art looks completely fine, there's no evidence of her romanticizing eating disorders. Viv was just drawing supportive art of someone she looked up to, and the fact she met Kesha in real life highlights this. Back when the Hasbun Hotel pilot aired, a YouTuber by the name of PK Russell made a review of the show. His video received a copyright claim from Vivzy's network Screenwave Media. PK Russell did a couple tweets about it and it kickstarted an entire drama where people called out Vivzy for copywriting any videos that criticized her show when that wasn't the case. Eventually, the claims were removed and that was the situation resolved. This situation was pretty stupid and mistakes happen. I have had claims from Screenwave before and every time I've just went back and edited that part and re-uploaded the video and the claim is gone. Obviously, this situation isn't something people should criticize Vivzy for. It wouldn't have happened in the first place if the YouTube content ID system wasn't so garbage and could tell what fair use commentary is. The next one is also another commonly brought up point. In 2016, Vivzy did two doodles of two controversial political figures, being Shion Head and Blair White. Vivzy also did a reply saying, You can disagree with things, I sure do too, but I think discussion is important and I can respect opinions, I don't cater to you. Vivzy also mentioned this criticism in her apology. That apology basically hit the nail on the head. She provided a bit of context about why she drew the fan art, apologized, and then said she doesn't support the people anymore. That should be the end of the argument. It's bizarre that people are holding her accountable to this in 2022 when she has literally apologized and disavowed the people she drew fan art of. There's no tweets of Vivzy being racist, saying slurs, or tweeting inappropriate rhetoric. The fact that people tried to call her racist etc for those two doodles is beyond stupid and anyone holding her accountable for it should be ashamed of themselves. This point could be split into several of its own but I'd rather just cover them all at once. Basically, throughout the years, there's been random threads and comments from people criticizing Vivzy or either of the shows for bizarre reasons. One example was when people called Vivzy on the show homophobic, because Kitty Killjoy said she doesn't touch the gays. Vivzy mentioned these criticisms in her apology when she mentioned how she herself was bisexual and many of the Spindle Horse team members were from across the LGBT spectrum. Other examples range from people saying characters like Vaggy and Angel Dust are bad stereotypes and that Vivzy is misrepresenting gay people for profit. All of these criticisms are complete garbage and you don't need me to explain why they're terrible. One thing worth mentioning though was back in 2018 when people bullied fans for shipping characters together that weren't canonically dating. Vivzy herself herself had to do a tweet saying it's fine for people to ship whoever they want as it's not hurting anyone. This tweet was brought back up recently by morons trying to use it against Vivzy and saying ship whatever you want causes more harm than good. The tweet was in 2018. She was clearly talking about normal and legal ships. Dodgy ships like Stovia didn't even exist at that point. People like that dude need to get a grip and stop holding her accountable for things that are out of her control. This one is similar to the last point, since it revolves around shipping. Recently, on August 3rd, 2022, a tweet was posted which got over 1.8k likes, titled, Why don't more people mention Vivzy Pop follows and hired pro shippers? The tweet includes two images. In the first image, we see an artist followed by Vivzy, and in their bio it says, Love problematic fictional ships and stories. There's no way to tell if they're serious or not, but at least to me it comes across as a joke. The second image shows the storyboard artist on Hasbun Hotel. There's no proof at all in this tweet, by the way. 
Like the person just says that Vivzy follows two users that support problematic ships, farms 1k Twitter likes, and then refuses to elaborate. The second person is probably included because their banner is Angel Dust and Valentino. This tweet is just complete mental illness. Like you can't hold Vivzy Pop accountable for every single person she follows because any single person could go off the rails at any moment. The two examples included are flimsy at best and complete misinformation at worst. There's no proof and the person turned off replies so only people they mention can reply. That says it all really. It's the tried and true formula where someone makes up an invisible person to argue with. They do a tweet starting drama to farm likes and when they get challenged at all they turn off replies or say I'm muting this. It's cowardly and only makes the people trying to cancel Vivzy look like they can dish out criticism but can't handle it themselves. <laughs> In 2016, Vivzy had a side blog where she posted art of characters from the 2016 animated comedy movie Sausage Party. She drew art of her candy cane OC along with another controversial character from the film. Vivzy addressed this in her original apology which I read earlier. 2016 was a different era and she already apologised for her actions. This situation is the same as when she did art for the two other political creators. Vivzy made a mistake, she apologised and that should be the end of this situation. I never request. This drama is one of the more recent ones. In June 2021, the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's, Scott Cawthon, was getting criticised after a screenshot of a donation list was revealed. In that list, Cawthon had made numerous donations to very conservative politicians. The issue with the donations was that the politicians themselves are extremely anti-LGBT and are quite controversial. People didn't understand why Cawthon would give money to such politicians, so people got angry and criticised him as a person. Viv had made a tweet about the situation itself. The tweet itself is now deleted, but Viv had given some criticism on Cawthon and how he handled the whole situation. Because of this tweet, rabid fans of Cawthon, or perhaps just fanatics of Five Nights at Freddy's, believe that Viv was the cause for Cawthon's harassment and doxing. This led to people going on a self-righteous crusade on Viv and people doxed her. This is a really messy situation and you can't really point the blame on any particular group other than the doxers. Regardless of what side you're on in terms of politics, no one deserves to be harassed or doxed. Vivzy just left a hot take in a reply to a friend. The fact that she was doxed over a singular tweet is a disgrace. Having two communities fight is always sad to see and it's even worse when people get threatened as a result of it. This one is still brought up to this day and it makes no sense because Vivzy was the one who got doxxed. You can definitely criticise creators for getting political on Twitter and this is something Vivzy has done frequently for years. However, people painted Vivzy as the villain in this situation which makes no sense. This case is less about Vivzy and more about how toxic Twitter is as a platform. Vivzy has been accused of stealing or copying original character designs from the artist Doll Creep. Vivzy purchased multiple characters from Doll Creep and they were good friends, even meeting up in person at one point. The bulk of the drama surrounds a sparkle dog, adoptable character named Gigi. Vivzy had purchased the character from Doll Creep and made art of her. Vivzy also made her widely popular Die Young music video featuring Gigi. After the music video came out, a lot of drama erupted between the two creators. Doll Creep, also known as Joe, was upset because though Vivzy said she legally bought the character, Vivzy did not give Doll Creep credit for the design in her now enlisted Die Young video. Vivzy said in a DeviantArt note that the reason she did not give Doll Creep credit was because Doll Creep had been acting rude and disrespectful to her, so she just gave them a special thanks in her music video instead. She also claimed that Doll Creep got Gigi's design from another artist altogether, so that design wasn't actually Doll Creep's to claim. A lot of drama between the two ensued, particularly on Tumblr. In the end, Vivzy's response was to call out Doll Creep for their abusive behaviour on a separate blog and redesigned Gigi. She renamed Gigi to JJ and gave her different colours, though the design is mostly the same. Doll Creep's Tumblr and online social media presence has been completely wiped with everything being deleted or privated. Vivzy's DeviantArt account was also hacked a couple of years ago with the majority of her posts being deleted. Vivzy commented on many of these accusations in her 2018 Tumblr post which I mentioned earlier. After looking through the entire situation, it's fairly obvious that it was just petty drama. In my opinion, I think Doll Creep was in the wrong. Vivzy 
credited them in the video, so I don't understand what the issue was. Fivzy said that Doll Creep was abusive and tried to pressure her in DMs. If Fivzy didn't credit Doll Creep at all, then maybe you could have had an argument. But it seems to me that the two had beef, and Fivzy wanted to distance herself from him. Doll Creep was angry and then wanted to clout chase off Fivzy's new video and started a shitstorm. This situation is basically a cautionary tale about why purchasing characters off someone can be problematic. Some characters in the Hasbun Hotel pilot shared similar designs to the ones Vivzi purchased from Doll Creep, so it'll be interesting to see if these characters make a return in the full show. Before I talk about Aaron Frost, I want to quickly talk about a situation in 2020 surrounding Vivzi. This situation is quite similar, and there's a couple of parallels between the two dramas. A user messaged Vivzi and asked about animators' wages working on Hasbin. Vivzi responded that the team are paid a fair wage, and the only people that need to know are herself and the animators. This person then took this as proof of Vivzi hiding how much she's paying people. They then made some rough calculations and stated how Vivzi paid one seventh the rate of the union average. After this tweet was posted, a number of animators came out in support of Vivzi and basically said they were paid well and that the post was bullshit. Vivzi herself also made a number of tweets reiterating what was said. The original poster deleted their tweet with the allegations and that was the situation. This situation was obviously completely stupid. The original poster made the info up off some guesses and had no evidence to back up anything. Fast forward to summer 2022 and a past Spindle Horse employee, Aaron Frost, makes a number of statements regarding Vivzi Pop and the alleged workplace interactions that were toxic. I have an entire playlist detailing the entire story which I'll have linked below. Basically, Erin had a number of bad interactions with some of the staff and Vivzi. After being let go, she posted the tweets and Tumblr posts featuring the allegations. Shortly after, a number of Spindlehorse employees came out in support of Vivzi and said the allegations were unfounded. Erin disappeared for a while and came back a couple months later to drop more allegations. This time, she included images of Vivzi sending her a cease and desist letter for breaking a non-disclosure agreement. Erin also included some screenshots of conversations with some Spindlehorse employees. Erin has been inactive on Twitter since this recent incident. This drama is probably the most confusing out of all of them and I can understand why some people don't really know what's going on. The fact that it spanned over multiple months and you basically had to watch nearly an hour's worth of videos just to get caught up just added to the confusion. The Aaron Frost situation is similar to the drama I mentioned before in 2020. Both times someone came out with allegations with little proof and then Spindlehorse team members came out in defense of Vivzi. The Aaron Frost drama is repeatedly brought up especially by people who don't know the full context of everything and just reply with the drama on any new has been news. As for my opinion, after going through everything I can safely say that Erin Frost mishandled the situation. In her original post there was little evidence or screenshots. Once the Spindlehorse employees came out in defense of Viv, it basically became a he said versus she said situation. When Erin made her return in October with fresh tweets and screenshots, they only worsened her original argument. Most of what she included had nothing to do with Vivzi and the discord messages just showed random conversations without context. It seemed seems that Erin had issues with various team members and instead of reaching out to them privately, she did a hit piece on Tumblr and Twitter which probably ended up only hurting her reputation since companies might not want to work with her again. The cherry on top in my opinion was when she mentioned to people like Ashley Nichols in her second set of posts. Dragging random individuals into a drama is a shitty thing to do, especially if you don't have any screenshots or evidence of their involvement. After going through nearly 10 years worth of dramas, I can see that there's a controversial aura surrounding Vivzi Pop. She's been involved in lots of drama and controversy, most of which are false or have been debunked. However, since there's such a long list, people just assume that if she's been involved in this many, then surely she's a bad person. If you dislike Vivzi or her shows, that's completely fine. No one is perfect and you can give your thoughts. However, where it crosses the line is when people spread false info that has been debunked nearly a decade ago. It's particularly frustrating since most of the events are very obviously nothing burgers. However, people on sites like Twitter and Tumblr keep bringing them up and won't move on. Anytime new info about either show comes up, people appear with these poorly written threads or in the replies of the tweets. It's hilarious as well since I've seen occasions where people did a thread on situations like the Aaron Frost drama where they detail everything she said, but as soon as Spindlehorse employees came out in support of Viv, the people making these threads either deleted them, muted the thread, or just ignored the new info and went back to tweeting 
fucking random garbage. Like you can't just make a thread on the drama, and as soon as the tides start to turn away from your favour, you abandon ship. It's too faced and just paints the picture that you either want Twitter likes, or just like spreading misinformation. There's been a lot of videos on Vivzy Pop and her history, but the majority of these were in 2019. We are in 2022, and these events are still being brought up. After the Iron Frost drama, I saw people link my videos to people who were confused, and it was nice to see. At least now, if you see people spreading stuff about Vivzy, you can link them this video, since it basically covers all of them. So that's everything. I'll have all the links and sources I use down below, and please let me know your thoughts on everything I discussed. Special thanks to Iox and Alice Sanity for helping with the video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.